Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is all about a block wall. And this is actually part three of a six part series. You can see the wood fence here. It's got some overgrowth on it. It's got multiple additional posts that were never on the initial build. Just stabilizers one put in because it was uh, failing over the years. So it's going to be coming out and we're going to be putting a block wall in. And these are in between two detached garages. Now fortunately I've got Hope Builders out here, uh, 27 students and uh, they're going to be helping with a lot of the demolition of this which makes it a lot easier when you got 27 able bodies. We'll use a little tractor when needed to pop some posts out here and there. Now we're opened up between two backyards, two properties. Now, in order to do these kind of jobs, you have to get a permit through the city. Also, when you're getting the permit, you have to get a property line agreement, which means both owners agree where that wall is going to be built and it is going to be on the property line whether or not you get a surveyor to do it or not once two properties owners sign this form then they agree that this is the property line whether it is or not doesn't matter now if two property owners didn't want to sign the uh, property line agreement then you could get it surveyed and then that would become all you need then you don't need to get two people to sign but it costs a lot more to do that to get a surveyor to come in here costs you a couple thousand dollars when you can just get a signature to say a signature from the homeowners they oh, yeah, I want to put the wall right where the old wall was that's a lot less money than two thousand dollars for a surveyor right So we've painted out the um, line and there's three different systems we can use for this block wall. There's, um, there's a design where you can go narrow and deep. There is, there's a design where you can go offset the so footing to one side of the entire wall. And there's a design where you can do a spread footing which is equally on both sides of the wall. And that's the one I went with. I believe they call that the T-type. And that's the shallowest of all of them and that's why I chose that one it's the shallowest but it is the widest and I like shallow for simple reason that I won't get into uh, underground utilities of any kind it's a no-brainer so we had um, multiple these properties are probably a good probably 100 years old so multiple footings were set as grade built up more footings were put in so we had footings on top of footings and on side of footings you know because they couldn't dig in the original place so they moved over they moved the left the right you have three to four footings at one location so we took a lot of concrete out on that fence line and now what we're going to do right here is we got the johnson rotary level set up it works every time it's a no-brainer it's a one-man operation now as we started shooting the dig for this footing out in between the two garages were at a higher elevation the existing grade so I decided to do a step up in the footing itself not a big step up just a four inch but it makes a difference four inches up means four inches less dirt coming out and you're up to um existing grade on the outside a lot quicker without burying a bunch of block
nice thing about four inches um, when you're doing your steps you can go four eight sixteen thirty two you know increments of fours or eights sixteens you know in that kind of realm that's kind of where you want to be because blocks are eight inch high that way you can split a block and now you have two blocks for the price of one so on those splits I had 20 feet I only had to split like uh, 15 no, no, no less than that it was about eight I had to cut about eight blocks then I had enough to run that whole split now here's the rebar cutter that I like to use here there's a lot of different types of rebar cutters but this is the one I always use right here I'm trying to explain um, because I got to put some L's on my verticals I got to put L's and I got to have them two foot above concrete for my, my for my overlap of my verticals so what we're gonna do is determine the best distance to cut a bar and have two foot overlap plus a nine inch bend tail and utilize a 20 foot rebar without any waste that's my objective in this situation now you can cut them a little bit longer as long as you're running a full 20 foot it beats having a 10 inch piece at the end that's waste so you're always dealing with 20 foot bars you gotta figure out What's my lap? What's the tail of that vertical every two foot on center? What length do I need to cut it so I don't have a lot of waste? Now here's all those roots I was talking about in this backyard that we stumbled across. A massive stump base and uh, any kind of wood under concrete is not good. Especially when it's this much. So we got to get it out of there. That's what I did. Back to the wall. We got 27 guys digging in one location. It gets pretty tough. But you can always see me in the crowd because I don't wear a hard hat. I used to wear hard hats on many jobs when it was required but um, to tell you the truth I never liked them they're kinda heavy and they give you a stiff neck There's that little step up right there what I was talking about on the foundation. Could have took it down another four inches of dirt, but then we would have talked about a whole nother block buried. Now what I'm doing with this board right here is I'm at the bottom of that two by four that is the um, bottom of the block, the first course. And this particular footing design, according to the Long Beach, California City Department, building department specs, they want five inches below grade and they want nine inches deep concrete. So then, in other words, they want to put dirt over the concrete, which I like. Cause that means you could actually do something in the future next to the wall whether it be greenery whether it be concrete anything you can still do because the footing is low enough so I really like that idea so you can see how I set those uh, boards the out steps up down there between the garages because that's because the elevation of the footing changes. 
the rebar is basically going to be the same because it's only a four inch transition uh, if I was going up a hill or something like that I'd have to lay all my bars on an angle but this is uh I didn't have to bend anything on this to make that transition on that step footing now we have alternating tells on the block wall every two feet we turn the bar the opposite direction then you have lateral in both directions wind basically that's for wind I would say I don't see other, any other lateral force now you notice I have those protectors on the rebar typically I probably wouldn't even do that but you know I had the student body out here and I wanted to kind of go over technical stuff in case you know they're out there although these particular protectors are now outlawed over here I don't know about anywhere else but in California you got to have the big square ones but I've had these for like 20 or 20 years or so so I still use them And basically what that does, it prevents people from falling on them and getting impaled. That's the whole idea of it. Which makes good sense. Now here's the splits that we're going to have to cut. We've got two, four, six, we've got nine of them out there. We'll split all those and we'll have 18. And that's more than enough to make up that uh, stepped course. That step footing. We use both sides and we can run them at the low end of the footing. And then we come up flush with the stepped up footing. And then now we're all 8 inch high block. This is just a 12 inch two stroke steel cut off saw. Got it on Craigslist for 250 bucks five years ago. Still works like a charm. I took that steel into the mechanic to get a little tune up on it, and they said, Hey, don't get rid of this thing. They don't make them like this anymore. I don't know if he said that because he doesn't want to have to lose a, um, a tool to repair or. If it's just a better tool. Here goes the concrete in the footing. 2500 PSI P gravel mix. And that board is the level. So we just pour it to that level. It also holds all the verticals up, which is nice. Now, as the concrete gets stiff, I pull all the, uh, the steel stakes. I pull the wood. The rebar stays pretty much where it started. Now, I'm going to double check my grade. Mark my stake, my line stake for my block. Now, I'm going to pull a line from one end to the other and start wet setting some block in the in the wet concrete the nice thing about these rebar um, protective things I have on the top on top of them I could still get a block over them now if I had the big four inch things I'd have to take them off already and then I'd be exposed to a hazard I could fall on it myself having to take those off and set those blocks but with these round, small round ones, I can actually put the block over them. So that's the good good part about it, though, these kind of covers. I'm 
right there was where the step up was going to go, but we didn't get all that footage in because this job is massive in a sense because we've got a lot of film going on. We've only got two cameras. But anyway, thanks for watching and stay tuned for part three, four, five, six.